guys, Andy here. I just wanted to make a quick video. I've been doing a lot of uh, load testing. Um, just testing this guy out. Uh, a lot of time-lapse footage, so I just wanted to go through that. I filmed it. It's, um, I'll post it, but it's pretty boring. I, I figured I'd just do this video quick and go over the, um, you know, the highlights of it. So... Let's see. So recharging it, this um one, it's like one thousand watt hours of uh, power. With this two amp charger, it takes between fourteen and fifteen hours to recharge this bank at two amps. So I definitely want to try and fix this uh, four amp guy. And get them running. I'm pretty sure it's just this um, MOSFET down here. It's pretty messy, so I just have to replace him, I think. But I'm not really sure. I think there's more broken than just that. But we'll see. So yeah, these were. I'm. Uh, I'm. I figured I'd do this video because I'm waiting. I ordered um, a little stopwatch to put beside this watch here. So look. It looks pretty good on the video footage, but I want to stopwatch because uh, time lapse footage uh, messes with time frames, and when you're dealing with like eight hours or more, it's it, it's a little hard video editing wise for me to fix it. It's uh, so I'm just gonna go with like a physical stopwatch instead of one through uh, video editing software, unfortunately. So. That's why uh, I won't show the time-lapse footage in this video, I'll just upload this one raw, and the next one will be all my um, edited video footage of time-lapse, so. But anyway, so, yeah, it takes about 14 to 15 hours to recharge from empty. And then, so, let's see. This is uh, my first discharge, so, it lasts four hours total at 200 watts of power which is 240 watts of DC power 40 watts is being used by this inverter so I'm sure I could uh, get a little bit more power out of it if I was using a pure sine wave inverter uh, definitely so at 24 volts it had already used 800 watts which is interesting and uh, it shuts off at 21 volts at uh, 1,011 uh, watt hours. And yeah, so at the very start, at 29 volts, it's only using 8 amps. And by 21 volts, it's using 11 amps, which I think is another interesting. Uh, just shows how inefficient it becomes at lower voltages, which is... Yeah, I thought it was pretty interesting. Alright, so recovery. So as soon as the inverter turned off, we had 20.9895. And then it immediately jumps to 21.36. And then after... Hmm. That's definitely not 51 minutes. Okay, yeah. So after 51 minutes, it's... It's gone from 21.36 to 23.84. So after an hour, it's recovered like 2 volts, 2.5 volts, which is kind of interesting. So after I saw that, I figured I'd do 5-minute increments, and then, yeah, uh, 30, 40, 45, because I saw that there was some interesting changes. So, five minutes after the inverter turns off, it's 23.6, then 23.68, and 23.72, 23.75. So, you can see it pretty consistent, and then it tapers off at, I found, like, optimal would probably be 30 minutes. Um, anything after that, it's, it's, it's of course, um, getting higher, but not by an amount that's you know, measurable. So after 30 minutes, these batteries have finished. 
um, recovering from a high high load, which is pretty interesting. And then I did a second discharge starting at 23.83. And you can see the amperage is a little bit less, which I found. Well, actually, that makes sense according to uh, these numbers. So it, it only run for a minute and 44 seconds. Um, you know, starting from dead, like, they're already dead, and then I just turned them back on after recovery, and they run for a minute and 44 seconds again, so, um, and it gives an extra 8 watt hours, um, yeah, and, um, there's not really much to tell about running it a second time, but, yeah, there's basically no power left. And then recovery from the second discharge, it was at 20.86, and then immediately jumps to 22. And after five minutes, it's 23.44 volts, 23.57, 23.62, 23.66. So. Yeah, that's, those are my findings. Um, I could chart it out and graph it, but I feel like the numbers don't really mean anything, even on a chart. All it really means is uh, basically after 30 minutes of running, it's, it's rebounded from its low voltage. So that's all you really need to know. And from this even, like, 15 minutes, so... Uh, the reason why I wanted to do these um, recoveries is because I wanted to know um, when, like if I set, a, set it up on a timer, after the batteries have been drained empty, when would it be safe to turn the inverter back on? And it, from these results, it seems to be between 15 and 30 minutes after, after uh, the inverter is shut down. That it's okay to turn it back on. Um, you know, I'd, ideally it'd be better to recharge the batteries up to full, but um, you know, it's it's good to practice and test. But this first recovery was the um, the best one. But yeah, definitely after 30 minutes, it's um, pretty much fully recovered. So any battery bank too. I, my other one I'm sure would show the exact same results. But I'm going to have to do a few more load tests um, with a stopwatch in there. Because, you know, it's, it is what it is. It looks pretty neat with this watch running because every second is a minute. So the, the minute hand just spins like crazy. So it's pretty neat. Because I do a five second interval, but... Anyways, uh, I thought I'd share that information, and then uh, hopefully in a few days I'll have my stopwatch and I'll be able to finish my testing. But yeah, so far I'm pretty happy with it. Um, the only thing I need to really improve is getting a better um, charger to recharge the batteries up. I was thinking I would just hook up this unit here, and then I'd get like 10, 10 amps instead of two, so instead of it taking like uh, 12, let's see, recovery, 15 hours, instead of it taking like 14 hours, it would take like, what, um, a fifth of that time, somewhere around there, so that's what I prefer, but I haven't done anything else, um, just been very busy with all my other work, so, you know, is what it is. Um, I ordered a whole bunch of those small digital displays, so I'm going to put them on this guy since he's a test, since this guy is a full prototype, and I've decided that I'm going to build another one of these, because I'm pretty happy with it, and it's, people seem to like these, so I'm going to build one more. I'm going to buy a bunch of drywall and plywood, and build at least one more of these things, but instead buy a better inverter. Because this one's good, but it's it's all for test. My next one, it's going to have it's this removed, this removed, 
Um, let's see. Um, I think I'd rather have like a 30 amp breaker, but 30 or 20, but uh, that's easy to replace. So it's going to have this guy as the balancing circuit instead of this big guy. And I thought about it, and I am going to put this, this shunt and this guy in there. This will still be in there. I'm still going to have these, but I want them on, like, big posts so that they're easy to connect to. Um, like a plastic shielded post. But with this removed and this removed, it'll give me a lot more space, and this can be moved down. So, yeah, I still want a 3S and 4S there for for people uh, so they can use it if they need to to connect up whatever device they want to so I think that'll be pretty good and I also ordered a um, 12 amp constant current constant voltage circuit just like just like this one except hopefully it's a lot more robust than this guy is much bigger capacitors and a bigger induction coil so hopefully it'll it'll work really well. So yeah, I'll, I'm going to refine this process, this design, and work on it next. And I'd like to buy a solar. I was I thought about it, and I am going to buy that that M that fake MPPT, the 7110 or something, 7110A, um, 10 amp charge charge controller, and then. I can have a 12 volt solar panel and that MPPT. It's like 50 bucks for it, but it'll be it'll be interesting to play with. And it's pretty cheap, but I'll look at my options, and uh, that way it can also, you know, run a uh, 12 volt system if need be. But this system here, it seems like it would benefit from being just a 12 volt system. But um, the problem is there but if i have a cccv that's 15 amps that's more than enough for most applications so i could probably do 4s and then somehow just only charge it up to like uh, let's see 4 8 12 16 2 4 6 8 16.8 on 4s so if i only charge it to 16 volts i think it still works just fine for most applications, but I can put a 15 amp CCCV in line with the uh, load, and that should that should be interesting to test out because I could remove this guy. I don't know, but um, yeah, I'm still working on that. But anyways, hope you like the video. Um, yeah, I hope you found it interesting. In case you are ever wondering about any of these values for uh, charge, discharge, and recovery voltages, you know, this is, you know, uh, if you have any questions, just ask, just put in a comment, just ask me anything, uh, I might have missed it, these are pretty quick and dirty videos that I make, uh, they're mostly just for, you know, for notes, and for, you know, anyone's benefit who works on this stuff pretty heavily, so, Thanks. Thanks, everyone. I'll talk to you later. Bye.